The basics of copyright law is our topic today, where we'll discuss the what, how, and the why. We'll even look at a few exceptions to copyright, so stick around. If you have an opinion or perspective about today's episode, click the like button, leave a comment below, or tweet out your views using the hashtag or mention B-N-L-E-E-Z. Today's discussion about copyright is meant for educational purposes only and should not be considered legal advice. Consult a legal expert for any specific questions about current law and rights related to copyrightable works. What's the purpose of copyright? Copyright is a legal right created by the law of a country that grants the creator of an original work exclusive rights for its use and distribution. The purpose of copyright is to encourage the creation and sharing of creative works. Copyright gives creators an incentive to produce and share new works by granting them exclusive rights to their work for a limited time, which provides an opportunity for a creator to benefit from his or her work. Think of copyright as having two rationales, the we and the I. At one end, individuals copyright work in order to serve the greater good, to contribute to society in order to help someone else by providing a piece of valuable work. At the other end, individuals copyright work in order to help themselves, in order to be recognized and compensated for their efforts, as well as respect the integrity of the work itself. Now, one can argue how much these rationales actually incentivize one to create a piece of work given the wealth of technologies used to communicate and engage around work that is protected by copyright law. These rationales were perhaps more meaningful a hundred years ago when the way work was created, distributed, and reused was quite different than it is today. What is and is not copyrightable? Let's begin with what is not copyrightable first by looking at five examples. Number one. Non-fixed works. To receive a copyright, a work must be fixed in a tangible medium of expression. If it is not, it doesn't get a copyright. Number two, ideas. Ideas themselves are not copyrightable, only the expression of an idea. Number three, facts. Works that are mainly made up of facts are not protected by copyright. This could include mathematical formulas, calendars, rulers, etc. Number four, U.S. government works. Any work from the U.S. government is not protected by copyright. For example, statutes, speeches made by federal government officials, press releases, etc. And number five, miscellaneous. Many other things are not protected by copyright, such as cooking recipes, slogans, domain names, and fashion designs. To be copyrightable, a work must be an original creative work of authorship that is fixed in a tangible medium of expression. For example, literary works, musical works, dramatic works, choreographic works, pictorial, graphic, and sculptural works, audiovisual works, sound recordings, and architectural works. A piece of work becomes copyrightable the moment it becomes fixed to a tangible medium of expression. What's the relationship between copyright and other methods of protecting intellectual property? In addition to copyright, there are two other methods of protecting intellectual property, primarily patents and trademarks. A patent is a temporary government-granted monopoly right on something made by an inventor. The historical purpose of the patent system was to encourage the development of new inventions, and in particular to encourage the disclosure of those new inventions. For applicants, Patents are an attractive way to gain exclusivity or to earn licensing income, although patents are also used for as bargaining chips, for example, in the case of cross-licensing. The most well-known type of patent is the utility patent, which protects inventions. Some countries have plant patents, which are granted to anyone who invents or discovers and asexually reproduces any distinct and new variety of plants. Another common method of protecting intellectual property are trademarks. A trademark is a word, phrase, symbol, or design, or a combination of these that identifies and distinguishes the sources of the goods of one party from those of others. A service mark is the same as a trademark, except that it identifies and distinguishes the source of a service rather than a product. A trademark must inform potential buyers about the trademark goods and services. This can be the company that made it, but also the characteristic of the good itself. 
Companies have a wide variety of options to achieve this from words and logos to shapes and colors and in some cases even sounds. The most important requirement is that the trademark is distinctive. A purely distinctive name cannot help buyers to identify the origin of the goods and so it cannot be a valid trademark. A purely descriptive name cannot help buyers to identify the origins of the goods and so it cannot be a valid trademark. What is the public domain? The legal term public domain refers to works whose exclusive intellectual property rights have expired, have been forfeited, have been expressly waived, or are inapplicable. Some examples of works that are now in the public domain are classical recordings, say from Mozart, Beethoven, and the like, silent films, etc. Under current U.S. law, a copyright may expire after 70 years after the death of the creator which then would be considered in the public domain. Works that are in the public domain do not require permission, whereas copyrighted work does require permission. Copyrighted material can enter into the public domain after the copyright has expired. And one of the types of Creative Commons is the CCO option that waives interest and in copyright protection so that others may freely build upon, enhance, and reuse the works for any purposes without restriction or copyright or database law. In contrast to the other types of CC licenses that allow copyright holders to choose from a range of permissions while retaining their copyright, CCO empowers yet another choice altogether, the choice to opt out of copyright protection and the exclusive rights automatically granted to creators the no rights reserved alternative. What are some exceptions to copyright protection? In an effort to balance user rights with the rights of the copyright owners, limitations and exceptions to copyright allow certain freedoms to be exercised in the case of education and quality of access, such as by the visually impaired, for instance. Exceptions to copyright protection give users immediate rights as to how works may be used, copied, and distributed under certain circumstances where technology now affords individuals new ways to communicate and engage with content. Fair use is a doctrine in the law of the United States that permits limited use of copyrighted material without having to first acquire permission from the copyright holder. In determining whether or not a piece of work falls under fair use, all four considerations shall apply. Number one, the purpose and character of the use, including whether such use is of commercial nature or is for non-profit educational purposes. Number two, the nature of the copyrighted work. Number three, the amount and sustainability of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. And number four, the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work. While the Fair Use Doctrine covers compliance to copyright law, the TEACH, or Technology, Education, and Copyright Harmonization Act, clarifies what compliance measures must be implemented with regard to distance education. In brief, the TEACH Act covers how copyrighted materials can be used and how ownership of copyrighted materials would be respected. Together with fair use, educators need to become familiar with the TEACH Act since these exceptions and limitations of copyright law can provide educative opportunities in how learners are able to engage with course content legally. Fair use applies to the extent the use of the copyrighted material is transformative. Transformation is a justification that using copyrighted work may qualify as fair use to the degree that it does not infringe in holder's copyright due to the public interest in the usage. I thank you for watching and encourage you to learn what you can about Creative Commons so that you can consistently make good purposeful decisions that relate to your ongoing development as a teacher and lifelong learner, both in terms of content creation and relationship building.